So a while back, I made a tutorial showing how to make this electric text effect in DaVinci Resolve, but that was in Resolve 16, a whole 2.6 versions ago, so a lot of people have been asking me to update it for Resolve 18. Now one common complaint I got from that video is that I went too fast for beginners to follow along, so in this video I'm going to go nice and slow, explain everything I'm doing, and I won't be using any plugins. So just as an overview of what we're going to be doing, we're going to take our text, isolate just the edges, roughen that up and distort it, then we'll add some glue glow and color, and finally, we'll add that over our text again. And as a bonus, I'll show you how to add that over any footage. Let's begin. So here in the Edit tab, under Effects, I can search for a Fusion Composition, drag that onto the timeline. I want to make sure my playhead is over that, then I can press this little magic wand icon and go into the Fusion tab, because this is where the magic happens. So now you're in Fusion, and this is where most people start to get confused. If you already know the basics of Fusion, then there are timestamps where you can skip ahead to the effect. So unlike the Edit tab or other programs like After Effects, Fusion doesn't use layers. It uses these things called nodes. Everything that we do is going to be with a node. It may seem confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually a really efficient way to work, and you can do more with it than you can with layers. So right now, we only have one node, which is our media out. This is basically our final output. Whatever is plugged into the media out is what we're going to see on the Edit tab. So to start, I can bring down a text node. Now, you can see nothing's happened, so we can drag out from this square and plug that into the yellow triangle of the media out. Now something's happened. In the text controls, we can type out something, and may bring up the size a little bit, and you can choose any font that you so desire. Now you might notice that the left side of the screen is still blank. So Fusion has two viewers, and under each node, if you hover over it, you can see two dots. These correspond to the viewers. The left one is the left viewer, and the right one is the right viewer. Right now, our media out is checked out for the right viewer. If we want to see it in the left viewer, we can select that node and press 1. So with any node, we can press 1 to see it in the left viewer, and 2 to see it in the right viewer. You can press this button here to only show one screen, and press it again to get both screens back. Finally, just some controls you should know. To move around, you hold down the middle mouse button, which is also the scroll wheel, and move around. And to zoom, you hold control, and then scroll with the mouse wheel. And then finally, to add tools, you can hit shift space, and that'll bring up the select tool menu. All right, now with those basics out of the way, let's get to the actual effect. So we've got our text here, and we want to get the outline from it. So with our text selected, I can hit shift space and search for an edge detect. I can hit enter to add that. And as the name implies, this effect detects the edges of our text. All I'm going to do here is change the mode to grayscale edges, just to make sure it's all in black and white. And I'm going to bring it down the edge width a bit. Now I'm going to break it up some more. So I'm going to click on the fast noise, and that'll automatically add a merge node. So I can bring that over here, nice to keep things organized. So in this merged node, I'm going to change the apply mode to multiply. That made things a little bit darker. I'm going to bring my fast noise to the left viewer. Now right now we have parts that are white and parts that are transparent, but we want it to be black and white. So in this color tab here, I can change the type to gradient. So back in the noise tab, if I bring up the contrast, you can see that everything that's black is black on our text, but everything that's white, we can see our text through. That's what the multiply apply mode is doing. If I change it to screen, you can see it's doing the opposite. What's white is white on our text and what's black is see-through but I want to change that to multiply for what we're doing. So in our fast noise, I want to bring down the brightness, bring up the scale, and maybe bring up the detail a bit. Now this is going to determine where the lightning is on our text, and the brightness determines how much lightning there's going to be. You can bring it up if you want more, and bring it down if you want less. Now by default, it only goes to negative one, but if you want to go further, you can manually type in a number. Another thing you can do is if you want it to build up, you can animate this number. So I can take this little red line here, which is our playhead, bring that to the beginning of the timeline, and then I'm gonna press this little diamond by the brightness. This creates a keyframe. Then I can go a bit further and bring up the number, and that automatically adds another keyframe. So if I scrub between these frames, you can see it's automatically animating between those two values. Now right now it's looking a bit static, so I'm going to bring up the seed rate. That gives it more of an organic electric look. Now let's make it actually look like lightning. With our merge selected, I'm going to add a displace node bring that to the right viewer. Now this node moves parts of the image around based on the color values of another input. In this case, we're going to use another fast noise, so I'm going to drag that down and plug that into the little green triangle here, bring that to the left viewer. Now right now you can see it's already started to do something. So I'm going to change the type to X and Y, and now we're back where we started. But if I bring up the refraction sliders, you can see it's moving our text. 
and it corresponds to the fast noise. You can see it's moving a lot here at this point in the middle, which corresponds to this kind of dot in our fast noise. So the X refraction controls left and right movement, and the Y refraction controls up and down movement. Now you might also notice that it's moving it side to side, but we want it to stay in the same place. So what I can do is bring down the offset all the way down, and we can do this on both the X and the Y. Now if we move the sliders, it stays in the same place, just stretching it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the X and Y refraction to somewhere in the middle here, then go to the fast noise. Now this is where we can really control the look at it. First off, I wanna bring up the seethe rate again and play around with the scale. The scale determines how much movement there's gonna be. This will control how big the warping is. If it's small, then there's gonna be really big motion. But if I bring up the scale a lot, then there's a lot of tiny motion. I think I want it to be somewhere between maybe five and six. Now contrast is gonna control how strong it is. I think I'm gonna bring it up just a tad. Now you can spend a lot of time just tweaking these settings. There's not really a right or wrong value to put here. Just play around until you're happy. Now to give it that electric crackle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this displace, just control C, control V, just like copy and pasting text. And again, I'm going to bring down a fast noise. Plug that into it. Then I'll bring the displace to the right viewer and the fast noise to the left viewer. Now this time in the fast noise, I'm gonna bring up the scale all the way and bring up the detail all the way. Now it's giving it that lightning shape, but it's a bit too intense for me. So what I'm gonna do is bring down the contrast a bit until it looks more suitable for what I want. I will also bring up the seethe rate on that. So right now our lightning is over a black background, but we want it to be transparent so we can put it over our text again. So to remove that background, I'm gonna search for a luma key effect, bring that, and by default it automatically got rid of the background. So now let's add some glows and color to it. So I'm going to add a soft glow effect to it. Now you might be tempted to just leave this as it is, but I'm gonna show you the secret to getting a really realistic glow. We're gonna stack multiple glows on top of each other to get a realistic fall off. So with this first glow, I'm gonna bring down the glow size until it's barely visible, something like around two, I think. I'm gonna copy and paste this, and this one, I'm gonna bring the glow size to default. I'm just double clicking on this value and that'll bring it to its default value. And I'm going to bring down the gain a bit on this one. Now finally, I'm going to Control C, Control V, paste this one more time. Now this one, I'm gonna bring up the glow size quite a bit, maybe some around 50, and again, bring down the gain. Now if I just add a soft glow off to the side and put that into the left viewer, you can see the difference between these two. I think the one on the right looks a lot more realistic. Now I can delete that, that was just for demonstrative purposes. Now let's add some color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit CC and add a color corrector. Now, with this little slider here, I can choose any color I want it to be. I think I want it to be a kind of cool golden look. That looks pretty snazzy. So now we have our lightning, but how do we see it over our text? Here's where the beauty of nodes come in. Right now, our text is going into the edge to detect, which is going into all these nodes to make the lightning. Now if we were using layers, anytime we wanted to use that text again, we'd have to duplicate it each time we want to use it. But nodes are actually able to do multiple things at once. So what we can do, with nothing selected, I can search for a merge node, then I can drag out from our text and plug this into the yellow arrow of the merge, that's the background, then I can drag out from the color corrector and plug that into the green arrow, which is the foreground. If I bring this to the screen, now our lightning is over our text. And it looks a little bit weird, so we can change the apply mode to screen. So now we have our electrified text. Now the really nice thing is since our lightning is being driven by the text, we can change our text to anything. I misspelled that. We can change our text to anything and the lightning will match it automatically. Now since our text is white, the lightning's kind of getting lost in it. So one easy, easy. So one easy thing you can do to fix that is go to the shading tab in the text and just change the type to gradient. Now you can play around with these arrows to choose how bright you want it to be. That'll just make the lightning pop a little bit more. And finally to see this on the edit tab, we can drag out from this merge and plug this into the media out. Now we can see it on the edit tab. And since we had a transparent background in Fusion, in the edit tab, I can just drag this up bring down some footage under that, and it's automatically on top of it. Now if you want more text effects, then you can check out this video right here, where I show you how to make cinematic beveled text, which is a video I should also probably update one of these days.